What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Cosmic Wonder. I'm Warren Thompson, and today we're going to be talking about some things that are going to happen in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. <laughs> Come on, Drax. Seriously, dude? Marvel Studios slash Disney has released some details about the movie, giving us a new description for the movie and some pretty good ideas about some particular scenes that will take place during Guardians 3. Now, I must warn you, some things we're going to talk about in this video are not going to be for the faint of heart because we have reports about some deaths. If you didn't really pick up on that fact from the trailer, it does look like we're going to have at least one death of one of the Guardians in this film. Pete, I'm done running. So we'll be talking about that today and we'll be talking about how Adam Warlock and the Sovereign connect with the High Evolutionary and talking about some particular scenes that involve Adam Warlock and Rocket Raccoon, specifically how Adam Warlock is going to kidnap Rocket. So we'll break down all of this in today's video and also don't forget we're doing a Marvel Legends giveaway right now. All you got to do to enter a subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below if you're chosen as the winner, I will announce it in a video. Just be sure to look out for fake comments of people people pretending to be me. If you win, I will announce it in the video. So on Disney Plus, there's a new description for the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So this is coming straight from Disney, straight from Marvel Studios. And it says at the top, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Peter Quill must rally his team to defend the universe along with protecting one of their own. Now, this one of their own is Rocket. The High Evolutionary is the villain, well, one of the villains, he's the main villain of Guardians 3, and he's also the creator of Rocket. He's the one who tore him apart and put him back together over and over again, as Rocket mentioned in the first Guardians film. Rocket, you're drunk, all right? No one's laughing at you. He thinks I'm some stupid thing. He does. Well, I didn't ask to get made. I didn't ask to be torn apart and put back together over and over and turned into some, some little monster. Rocket, no one's calling you a monster. And it looks like in this film, he wants him back. But moving on, there is an even bigger description. Under the details tab, if you click on it, it says, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. In Marvel Studios' Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, our beloved band of misfits are looking a bit different these days. After acquiring Nowhere from the Collector, we find the Guardians working to repair the extreme damage done by Thanos. Determined to make Nowhere a safe haven, not only for themselves, but for all refugees displaced by the harsh universe. It isn't long before their attempt to return to normal is appended by a brutal attack from a new unknown enemy and Peter, still reeling from the loss of Gamora, must rally his team around him to defend the universe along with protecting one of their own. A mission, if not completed successfully, could quite possibly lead to the end of the Guardians as we know them. So again, talking about deaths, that last line, it's pretty morbid. And it definitely shows us that the stakes are pretty high in this one. But let's go ahead and break this thing down piece by piece. Now, the first part is actually very big. The Guardians of the Galaxy purchased nowhere from the Collector. Now, if you watch the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, you know this, although it was only briefly mentioned. But what I really like about this is that they say they're trying to make it a safe haven for refugees in the universe, and they're trying to repair the damage done by Thanos. Now, we haven't really addressed this outside of Earth. We've seen a few accounts of what has happened on Earth with the snap, people getting dusted and then coming back. We saw that happen to Yelena Belova. We also saw it happen to Monica Rambeau. We've seen the chaos on Earth, but we have yet to see it anywhere outside of Earth. Now, Thor Love and Thunder could have done it, but nothing about the snap was really mentioned. And the cool part here about them taking over nowhere is that they're now official. They are the official guardians of the galaxy. This is their title and their job. They are truly looking after the galaxy, creating a safe haven for everybody. And we saw them decide to take on their title and provide universal protection in Thor Love and Thunder. Then the Guardians split up with Thor so the Guardians could go answer many distress signals. Now it's many years later. James Gunn has actually confirmed this and said that Thor was only with the Guardians for a few weeks. Which means Thor lost all of that weight in just a few weeks. Which is pretty crazy, but you know, he's the God of Thunder. So the Guardians of the Galaxy now are truly the Guardians of the Galaxy. Not really a band of misfits anymore. But here's where it gets juicy. It says it isn't long before their attempt to return to normal is appended by a brutal attack from a new unknown 
enemy. This is Adam Warlock, because if they were attacked by the High Evolutionary, Rocket would have known who he was, so it wouldn't be an unknown enemy. So this is clearly Adam Warlock. Now here's the thing. We know that the Sovereign, and specifically Aisha, created Adam Warlock. She created him to destroy the Guardians. But judging from what we saw in the trailer, it does look like Rocket gets kidnapped, and he ends up in the hands of the High Evolutionary once again. And let me explain just how I think this is going to happen. The Guardians of the Galaxy get attacked at nowhere by Adam Warlock. And from here, Adam Warlock actually takes Rocket back to the High Evolutionary. The only question about that is why? Aisha is the one who wanted Rocket Raccoon. Why would Adam Warlock take him back to the High Evolutionary? And that answer, I believe, is because they actually needed the High Evolutionary to perfect Adam. In the post credits of Guardians 2, we learned that Adam's cocoon was new. This type of person that Aisha was creating is a totally new thing that they were doing. So one could easily see how she wouldn't be able to perfect it, but could go to the high evolutionary because he is known for genetic evolution. He experiments on subjects and advances them genetically. If there's an expert out there on evolution and trying to create a perfect being, it is the high evolutionary. So I believe that Aisha goes to the high evolutionary to help him perfect Adam Warlock. I am assuming that he is going to ask why she wants Adam Warlock to be made, and I'm assuming as well that she'll tell him to go destroy the Guardians of the Galaxy, in which she will mention that Rocket Raccoon is a part of it because she hates Rocket for stealing the batteries. That's where the High Evolutionary will become sort of aware of Rocket Raccoon again. Remember, Rocket escaped from the High Evolutionary. So here's where I think a deal gets made. The High Evolutionary says that he will perfect Adam Warlock, but in return, Adam must deliver Rocket to him. Aisha would probably accept this because she knows that he'll probably torture Rocket Raccoon, which is what she'll probably want. This is where the final line comes in, where it says a mission, if not completed successfully, could quite possibly lead to the end of the Guardians as we know them. I believe this is because Rocket Raccoon gets kidnapped and is about to be killed, and if they don't complete this mission, a rescue mission, he'll die and the Guardians will never be the same. Also, a scene that backs this up is the scene from the trailer where Rocket says, I'm done running. This could be because the High Evolutionary keeps trying to attack them, or it could be when the Guardians actually end up rescuing Rocket. In that scene, we can see the background is on fire. There's a lot of chaos and destruction behind them. So they clearly just fought most likely to protect Rocket, since this description says twice that the Guardians have to protect one of their own. So it looks like Adam Warlock is going to be attacking the Guardians of the Galaxy at now their home base, Nowhere. He's going to defeat them, probably pretty easily, and then take Rocket. From there, the Guardians will search for him, and that's where I think Gamora gets involved. Nebula could have heard of the High Evolutionary before, and she could say that possibly Gamora knows where she is, so they could try to locate Gamora. Or since Nowhere is now a safe haven, perhaps Gamora simply shows up at Nowhere. And even though Gamora doesn't really have a huge connection to the Guardians at this point, Nebula still is her sister, and she's clearly a better sister in this timeline than the one that she had in the other. So perhaps that's why she'll feel compelled to help. Her sister's family, that is kind of her family. So I think that the Guardians will end up finding Rocket, they'll end up rescuing him, but then they're going to take the fight to him. Because if they don't, then he's just going to keep searching for Rocket over and over and over again until Rocket eventually dies. And speaking of deaths, there's been a report recently, and I will give you a spoiler alert right now if you don't want to hear it, click away. There's been a report recently from Alex over at the Cosmic Circus that Drax will die. Now, I don't particularly like this because I feel like we didn't get much more of a story about his wife and his daughter. There was a rumor going around a while ago that his daughter and his wife weren't actually dead and that he could quite possibly run into them in Guardians 3. However, that was just a rumor and is not confirmed in any way. But we do know that this is going to be the final installment of the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy from James Gunn. And he's probably gonna go out with a bang. Even Palm Clementif recently said that this film, it doesn't mean that it's over over, but it is going to be different moving forward, which basically means deaths. We could have some retire, but based off of what James Gunn has been known to do in some of his films, I'm assuming we're going to get one or two or maybe even more deaths. And that is going to be super, super sad. So RIP at least Drax, if this is true. But hey, let me know what you think about these plot points in the comments down below. What do you think about the plot so far and my theories? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. And for live updates, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.